Just in case you were wondering, it is entirely possible to sunburn your nose when it is single digits outside and sunny. Snow reflection. I love this state. Hello fellow plant people and welcome back if you're returning to my channel. If you are new, also welcome. My name is Jen and I go by The Leafy Geek here and also on Instagram. Today I'd like to show you my top 10 plants of 2020. You might have, if you follow me on Instagram, already seen I posted a, a little conglomerate um, picture of my top 9 plants. Um, that's pretty accurate, so sneak peek over on my Instagram right now, but I thought I'd make a video quick and just highlight those plants and briefly explain why they made my favorites list this year. So let's just get right into it, shall we? So the first plant I wanted to showcase is my Begonia Lucerna. Um, really, this kind of expands into all begonias at this point because the year 2020 was the year I discovered or finally got on the begonia train. <laughs> and I am a fan now. And I'm, I'm really a fan of the ones that I found that are doing well in my home, that are relatively easy to care for. I don't have any Rosamidus begonias yet. I'm not there yet. Um, but I do have several uh, cane varieties of begonia, this one included. And the, one, the reason I wanted to highlight this one is just because it is really gorgeous. The leaves, the texture, the size of the leaves are impressive. It's pushing out new growth. And it's just a gorgeous plant. I'm a big fan. Uh, it, it currently lives in my house. Uh, it is near a humidifier, but it isn't in, under glass or anything. It's not in a cloche. It's living in my house environment. Um, it's getting humidity and it seems to be doing really darn well. So number one for 2020 is Begonia Lucerna. Next plant on my top 10 list for the year 2020 is this lovely cast iron plant. This variety is the Milky Way cast iron plant. It has this natural speckling on the leaves. I'm a big fan of really any variety of cast iron plant uh, for your home because they are low light plants. They do well in average household humidity. They don't need a lot of care. Um, you can just kind of put them in a corner and they look pretty. So, uh... This one is great, um, mainly because it does have that added interest of the speckling on the leaves. This one's a lot easier to find now than it was at the beginning of 2020, um, which is also great. Uh, but as you can see there, I've got some new growth popping through. This is in a north-facing window, and it's in my darkest north-facing north window because that particular window is shaded by a deck. Um, that's looking off onto my patio, which is underneath a deck. So it doesn't get a whole lot of light and it has put out a lot of new growth since I've had it. So this one, number two, is my Aspidistra Aleator Milky Way cast iron plant. I should mention too, these aren't in any particular order, uh, but in any case, number three on the list is this beautiful specimen of Philodendron Imperial Red. So the reason this philodendron made the list is because it's probably my fastest growing upright philodendron. Uh, it has put out three new leaves in my care, I believe, or two new ones that are quite large and it's working on a third. So that's the current status as I see it. And these leaves come out this really cool dark red and then they fade eventually to this dark green, which is just a really bold statement. The walls in my house are white um, because I do live in a lower level uh, duplex apartment. And so I needed light walls to brighten up, but that means I can put these really stunning, impressive specimens of plants up against them on shelves and they just stand out and look phenomenal. So number three, on my top 10 list for 2020 is this Philodendron Imperial Red. The next one on my list might be kind of hard for you to see. I'll try and get some shots in there uh, for you. 
But this one, number four on my list, is my McCody's Patola Jewel Orchid. So this is known as the Lightning Jewel Orchid. I know there's a glare. You guys know what, the, what this particular plant looks like. And this one has been on my wish list for a long time. It is just so stunning. The leaves, the patterning on the leaves, how they sparkle and almost look like they're glowing, the lines on them. Uh, this one... I got, it was a very small plant, it's still quite small, um, but it's doing really well in this, uh, this enclosed terrarium. I just have it planted in sphagnum moss. This plant is a candidate uh, to, for me to be moving to my larger terrarium soon. Um, so that'll be a future video, but just so you know, that's the plan for this guy. Let me see if I can, oh god, this is scary. Oh god. So that, my friends gorgeous little plant there. Um, but this has made the list specifically because it is a wish list plant of mine that I've been looking for for a while and finally acquired. So number four, Makoti's Patola, the Lightning Jewel Orchid. <laughs> what are we on? Number five? I'm pretty sure. Losing track wandering around my house finding these plants. But this one, uh, the next one on my list of my top 10 plants of 2020, this is, uh, I believe it's known as a tiger aloe. It's also referred to in my neck of the woods as a pheasant breast aloe, uh, mainly because of the striations on the leaves. These resemble a certain bird's foliage. That bird is commonly hunted up here in Minnesota, um, but they are really pretty birds so I can see where it gets the name. And this one has made the list because it's been a trooper in my home. Um, it was just a really, it, it almost was an impulse buy for me when I picked this one up. And it's just a gorgeous specimen of that plant. Uh, I'm really happy to have it. Um, I got this at my local garden center, um, I wanna say mid-year. I don't remember exactly when, um, but this aloe, you know, I, I'm not a succulent fan, but I picked this one up. It drew me to it. That says something. So I felt like it deserved to be on this list um, just because it is gorgeous. And it is, you know, putting out new growth from the center. Um, I have it in an interior space in my home under a grow light, and it's still growing. So that's impressive to me. I always appreciate plants that can do that. Um, so yeah, um, in the number five spot on my top 10 list, that goes to the tiger aloe or the pheasant breast aloe. All right, number six on the list, surprisingly, is a prayer plant, you guys. This is my Beauty Kim Moranta. This is a stunner of a plant, you guys. It's the, the prayer plant, the Moranta species that's, or the cultivar, I should say, that's variegated. It has speckled variegation on the leaves. Um, since it's been in my home, it is putting out some new growth. It's still a little bit small, but it is growing. And I've noticed this one is pretty, it, it stands up pretty well to even just average household humidity. I do have it close to a humidifier, but it's, it's a small humidifier and it doesn't churn out a lot of, of you know, volume that uh, of vapor that would potentially increase or boost the humidity all that much. Um, but it, it's doing fine. It's doing really, really well, actually. I don't see, you know, too many leaves that have crisp, you know, crisping edges on them at all. It's pretty, it pretty tolerant when I forget to water it, which, let's be honest, as a Hoya person, I tend to underwater most of my plants. And some of the ones that I've been getting into this year don't really like it that much when I do that. Um, but this one has been really steady and, again, is putting out a lot of growth. It's a good-sized plant. So I'm quite happy with this one. I'm really excited to see it get big. And then, you know, once it grows, once I repot it and it just turns into this big, beautiful plant, I'm going to be able to feature it. It's gorgeous. It's such a pretty plant. So this is number six on my list. This is the Maranta Beauty Kim. We're on number seven, you guys. It's gonna be a pretty common one, um, which again, you know, common, uncommon plants. I'm a fan of all of them. Uh, and I'm kind of surprised as I was evaluating this list at how diverse that list actually was. 
in terms of the varieties of plants. I was, you know, as a Hoya collector, kind of expecting most of the plants on this list to be Hoya, but they're not, um, although I do cheat a little bit, um, which you'll see in a second. But anyway, number seven is this, you know, tried and true, regular old uh, Skindapsis. Uh, this is the Argerius, so the Skindapsis pictus Argerius. And this guy is on this list for its resilience because it has made a comeback, maybe even a couple of comebacks over the past year where it wasn't happy, where I had it, you know, based on mistakes that I made, it started to decline, I took cuttings, thinking I was going to lose it, um, but we have apparently made up um, because it's growing quite a bit. It seems to be happy, and I'm quite happy. Um, the new growth, as you can see on these vines, the leaves, uh, they're looking a little bit stretched, but not much. Not anything other than like a typical skindapsis that I've seen, really. Um, so the, no, you know, the internodal spacing isn't too bad. Um, and the leaves just are really strongly marbled with silver. Um, so I'm feeling like it is finally in a place where it's happy and it's gonna just take off and grow. It's already draping off of the shelf that it's on and I really just love the look. It adds a lot to the space, that jungle vibe that all of us are going for. So this, my friends, number seven on my list is the Skindapsis pictus argerius. Look at that. So pretty. Okay, because my Instagram post only had nine squares, there was going to be an extra plant featured in this video that didn't appear on Instagram. And that is this one, you guys. This is my vanilla planifolia, or my vanilla vine, or my orchid, my vanilla orchid. Uh, I have to tell you, I have to tell you about this plant. I was quite nervous that I was not going to be able to grow this well in my home. It's just the type of plant that doesn't really seem like it's going to do well in Minnesota, especially in the winter. I've had it for a few months now, and... My goodness, you guys, it is climbing like crazy. I'm trying to show you. So it has three separate little growth points that it's, you know, growing from here. There's this one. This is kind of the medium-sized vine that I'm trying to, to wrangle right here. There's a smaller one right here that's also actively growing. But this is the big one. This is the main one that has completely grown up from when I received this plant. It was probably only, you know, this long, about where my finger is. All of the vines, the other two vines were quite a deal smaller. They were just little growth points at that point. But this thing has not stopped growing. So I need to figure out a better living situation for it, I think. If I need to get a bigger moss pole, um, I'm not averse to that. I think that might be a good idea at this point, but this thing is a terrific grower, and it just doesn't stop. <laughs> um, so right now I just kind of have it doing this. Looks kind of awkward. It's right by my humidifier in my living room. Um, it's in a north-facing window. It's loving life. I couldn't ask for a more interesting or unique plant in my collection at this point, I, I don't think. It's just a really cool one. I'm really happy and fortunate to have it. Um, and to be able to grow it and see that it's growing as well as it has. It just makes me really happy. So vanilla planfolia, strongly recommend if you can find one, pick one of these up. I know they come in variegated versions as well. But I just have the plain green one and I'm a fan. For the last two entries on my list, we had to take a little field trip to my plant room and I'm going to show you the last two entries on my list <laughs> at this point. So, let's see if we can do this vlog style with me on the frame. That might be cool. So, number nine. We're on number nine, I believe. Pretty sure. Number nine is my Hoya Linearis. And the reason why it's the Linearis, as opposed to all of my other Hoya in this room, the reason it's the Linearis 
is because my first experience with this plant was not good. Um, couldn't keep it alive. Swore to myself I wasn't going to have a Linearis in my collection at that point. And then I, of course, changed my mind and picked this beautiful specimen up. They were starting to become a little bit more common in the United States at that time. Um, and they were being kind of mass produced and sold by Plantarina. So I got this one from Plantarina when she was selling them as four inch pots. I don't know if she still does, but, uh, and it's, it's grown. It's, it took off. It loves the spot where I have it hanging. I have new growth popping up the top right here. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. <laughs> Let's see. Right here. And these vines have just continuously grown. Um, so yeah, it made it. It made my favorite list because I do love the look of this plant. It's just so drapey and just a fun, unique, different Hoya than your, your typical clambering Hoyas here or even your other hanging Hoyas like my Curtisia right here, which I bet you're surprised that this one didn't make the top 10 this year. But yeah, number nine in, the, in that list is Linearis, because second time's the charm. <laughs> okay, so I'm standing in front of what that last photo on my little nine photo block on Instagram uh, was. So I kind of cheated and put on this entire shelf, which I have, I've since moved all of my jungle cacti that were on this shelf off. Um, and moved them to a different part of my house. I think they're gonna do really well where they're at. Be mainly because I have a lot of small Hoya. And a lot of these Hoya are wish list plants for me. Um, they're smaller specimens, but I still wanted them all in one space. Um, this is kind of where they graduate to after they've spent time either recuperating in my propagation box or uh, in my glass terrarium that I have out in my other room. So I love this entire shelf so much. Was going to count it as the 10th plant on my top 10 list. I do think that's kind of cheating, so I will pick one from this shelf. But just keep in mind that in my heart, all of these plants on here have made that list. Okay, I switched views so I could just kind of give you an overview of why this was such a tough decision for me to make. Because these are gorgeous plants, and I love them all. They are all number one in my heart. I love Hoyas so much. They are my plant of choice. This level two is equally as stunning. Oh my gosh. gosh, my gosh. Yeah, this is a glorious, glorious shelf. I could pretty much just stare at this all day. And I've got some cool ones down there. My Dyskidia, kind of toward the bottom there. So, who's going to take that tenth spot? I think it's going to have to be this one. So this is my Hoya caudata, and this has been a wish list plant for me. It's been really, really high on my wish list for a long time. Finally acquired one, and it's acclimated quite well. This is a new uh, vining tendril from when I had it in my home, this growth point activated. So oh, I'm relieved. I love this plant because the leaves just feel so unique. Very cardboard-esque and it's it's one of those plants that is kind of ugly but it's probably why I'm drawn to it and others like it um, just the weird looking Hoyas are my favorites so <laughs> this will be fine I am completely happy with this decision to give the tenth spot on my list to Hoya caudata it's just I'm so happy that I have this in my collection so yay, look at you. But again, it shares a very competitive stage with all of these guys. 
really this whole room is glorious. For those of you who haven't seen it. Oh, Mahoyas. Pretty much in one spot now. So that's it for me, you guys. That was my top 10 list of plants from 2020. Plants that I have thoroughly enjoyed adding to my collection and that I'm excited to see what they do in the future. So again, I just want to thank you for joining me on this little video tour of those plants. I want to hopefully post this on or around New Year's. If it's Eve, if it's day, I'm not really sure when it's going to go up, but it's gonna. So I wanted to wish you all a happy new year. And of course, always enjoy your plants.